All right, kiddos, welcome back. We're going to start a new chapter today. This chapter is obviously entitled Chemical Equilibrium. Now, we've used the term equilibrium a couple of times already this year. You should have a minimal understanding of what equilibrium is. We're going to talk a lot about it in this chapter. Now, many of you might think that all chemical reactions reach what we call completion. Uh, for instance, if I had a bucket of gasoline in the front of my room, so here's a bucket, and we can see through it, so it's full of gasoline, and I throw a match in there. Okay, so this obviously is a lit match. That bucket of gasoline will start to burn, and that will continue to burn so long as there is gasoline in the bucket, and there's oxygen in the air, um, to combust that those gasoline molecules to react with them. That will continue until I either run out of gasoline or I run out of oxygen. We say that those types of reactions go to completion. Now it's important that you understand in this chapter that not all chemical reactions proceed to completion. That's what that first sentence tells you. Many reactions reach what we call an equilibrium condition. This simply means that the forward and reverse reactions balance each other out because they take place at equal rates. Now, this doesn't mean that there's equal amounts of product and reactant. Once equilibrium has been established, it simply means that products are being formed from reactants as quickly as reactants are being formed from products. So, if I take this simple generic example, A forms B, you'll notice the arrow is going both ways. That means that B is also forming A. So reactants are forming products, and my products are turning back into reactants. When, that, when those two rates equal each other, we say we have reached an equilibrium. Here, let's take a look at these two graphs. Here's the first one. Here's A, and of course, at the beginning of my reaction, at time zero, I have lots and lots of reactant, don't I? And I don't have any product at all, because the reaction hasn't started yet. So, as the reaction proceeds, the amount of reactant I have decreases, you would agree. And this is a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So, for every A that reacts, I produce one B. So that means B starts getting bigger, and that continues over time. Now, if we were to track this reaction, notice that we reach what's called an equilibrium. Now, I actually think that the equilibrium is achieved somewhere back over here. You'll notice that the slope of the line of B being produced and the slope of the line of A being consumed is equal to zero. Now, the slope of this graph is the change in y, which is the change in concentration over change in time. It's a rate. So, in other words, the rate of B being formed is 0 over here, and the rate of A being formed is 0 over here. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing. In reality, B is still being formed. And so you might say to yourself, well, how come the slope doesn't increase? How come I'm not making more and more B, right? Well, it's because at that point, the B is turning back into A just as fast as A is turning into B. Okay, the rates are the same. And we reach what we call a chemical equilibrium. So notice that when equilibrium has been established, the concentrations of reactants and products are no longer changing. We no longer have a change in concentration. This does not mean the product has stopped forming. It simply means the amount of product formed is now equal to the amount of product converting back into reactant. The rate of the forward reaction is now equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Now, we can quantify this. We can write what's called equilibrium expressions. These are ratios that tell us that once equilibrium is established, how much product I have compared to the amount of reactant that remains. So an equilibrium expression is a ratio used to describe the relationship between the concentrations of product and reactant once equilibrium has been established. Now this ratio is called an equilibrium expression. 
So let me give you another generic reaction. Let's say I have A molecules of A and a certain number B molecules of B and so on. They react to form C molecules of C and little d molecules of D. All right. Now the arrow goes both ways, which means when I reach equilibrium, these products are turning back into reactants and the reactants are turning into products. Now, the ratio that we would use is the ratio between the amount of product we have in terms of concentration relative to the amount of reactant we have remaining in terms of concentration. So, I would have the concentration of product C raised to the little c power times the concentration of d at equilibrium raised to the little d power. In other words, the coefficients in the balanced equation become exponents in this equilibrium expression. And then I would divide that by the amount of a I have at equilibrium raised to the little a power and the amount of b I have at equilibrium raised to the little b power. Okay? So once again, the exponents a, b, and c are the coefficients in the balanced equation. So once again, the equilibrium constant expression is the ratio of the molar concentrations of the products to the molar concentrations of the reactants, with each concentration raised to a power equal to its coefficient. Now, when this equilibrium constant, this Keq, when it becomes bigger than 1, that means uh, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. We say that the products are favored in this particular reaction. We have more product relative to reactant. A lot of times this equilibrium constant is smaller than 1. That means the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So we don't have as much product as we do reactant. And so we say that the reactants are favored in that situation. So let's take a look at this. Let's try to draw a graph. Let's do two graphs, actually. One for Keq being bigger than 1, and one for Keq smaller than 1. So let's do Keq bigger than 1 first. So my y-axis is going to be concentration of A, uh, of A and B, and my x-axis is going to be, of course, time. So, A is going to start out really, really high. Here's my concentration of A at the beginning, and of course B is going to start out really, really low. I'm not going to have any product yet. All right. So if Keq is bigger than 1, that means I'm going to have a lot of product relative to reactant once equilibrium is established. So B will go up, 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 up. Now remember, while B is going up, 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 it's a one-to-one -one ratio. A is going down, 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 isn't it? At the same rate. Okay, and then we're going to reach a plateau here where equilibrium is established. Trying to draw this nicely. And so at equilibrium, don't I have lots of B relative to the amount of A that remains? That means if I had a ratio of the concentration of B over the concentration of A at equilibrium, which is somewhere right around here on this graph, that would be greater than 1. Okay, let's draw another graph. Let's change colors here. Let's do one where the equilibrium constant is smaller than 1. So here's another y-axis where I have the concentration of my reactants and products and my x-axis where I'm showing time. So here's A. It's really high at the beginning. Here's B. It's really low at the beginning. Reaction hasn't started yet. And once equilibrium has been established, let's go ahead and flatline here. Hmm, I only lost a little bit of A, which means I only gained a little bit of B. And we're going to flatline like that, aren't we? So equilibrium has been established right over here. So here, if I were to compare the ratio of B, concentration of B, to the concentration of A, do you realize that that would be a number smaller than 1? Okay? Now, the equilibrium expression is always true for a given reaction at a given temperature. In fact, a change in temperature is the only thing that changes the mathematical value of the equilibrium constant. So for a particular reaction, it will always have the same equilibrium constant unless I start messing with the temperature. 
It's important to note that species shown in the, in the equilibrium expression are expressed in terms of molarity. Well, we cannot express solids in terms of molarity or liquids because they're not homogeneously distributed throughout the reaction container. So this is important and something that you're probably going to miss and forget. I'm going to highlight it so you, to hopefully help you not do that. But as a result of this, we never include solids and liquids as part of the equilibrium expression because they do not reach react homogeneously throughout the reaction container. Okay. Also, their amounts cannot be expressed in terms of molarity. Alrighty. However, gases or ions or molecules in solution can be expressed in terms of molarity. These are the only species that we will show in the equal equilibrium expression. You'll probably forget, but do your bestest to remember that. So let's go ahead and write an equilibrium expression for the following reaction. I'm going to do example two for you, and then I'm going to see if you can do three without my help. So the equilibrium expression is KEQ equals, and we're going to draw a line. Now remember, it's the ratio of product at equilibrium compared to the amount of reactant remaining at equilibrium. So we put our product concentration on top, which is NH3 raised to the second power. So remember, the coefficient in the balanced equation becomes the exponent in the equilibrium expression over the concentration of N2 to the first power and the concentration of the other reactant, H2, to the third power. See how that coefficient is 3, so that becomes the exponent 3 for H2 in the equilibrium expression. So that would be the equilibrium expression for that reaction. Now, if we knew the concentration of ammonia and nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas at equilibrium, we could plug their numbers into this expression, and we can come up with a numerical value for the equilibrium constant. And the only thing that would change that would be, that's right, changing the temperature of the reaction system. Okay, you try one on your own. Pause the video um, and uh, in a minute, pause the video um, and then write the equilibrium expression for this reaction. Okay, ready? All right, see you soon. Okay, let's see. Did you guys do this? Did you start out with KEQ equals, you drew a line, and you put products on top, CO concentration squared, right? You remembered that the coefficient becomes the exponent in the expression. And then you probably did this. You probably put C on the bottom squared and O2 on the bottom. If you did that, you did something wrong. Do you remember what it is? That's right. C kiddos is a solid. We do not include solids in the equilibrium expression because remember we can't express their concentrations in terms of molarity. They're not homogeneously distributed throughout the reaction container. So the equilibrium expression would leave off the solid, or if there were a liquid in this reaction, in its components. Okay? So if we knew the concentration of CO2 gas at equilibrium and oxygen gas at equilibrium, we could plug those numerical values in and we could solve for KEQ for that reaction. All right, let's work backwards. How about if I give you an equilibrium expression and you try to write the reaction? So here is the equilibrium expression for a reaction. Could you please write that reaction out for me? Pause the video now, see how you do. All right, welcome back. So I'm going to draw an arrow going this way and this way. And I'm going to put some reactants down. So remember, we have products on top and reactants on the bottom. So did you put CO2, and I'm going to make that a gas on the reactant side, and I'm going to put a 2 in front of that because that exponent is 2, and the exponent comes from the coefficient in the balanced equation. And my products are on top of this expression. So I have CO gas, and I'm going to put a 2 there, plus 
oxygen gas, O2, is because that's my other product. All right, so if you wrote this reaction, good job. That is the reaction for this equilibrium expression. Okay? All right, let's stop there for the day. Next time we see each other, we're going to go ahead and put some numbers in these expressions, and we're going to do some math. So we'll see you soon. Look forward to it. Bye-bye.